Good evening and welcome to the Royal Opera House. First of all, I would like to start with setting the scene. Think of a beautiful, picturesque village where a mysterious inventor lives. There are mechanical dolls, lots of mischief and a beautiful wedding. These are all the ingredients which make up the classic, romantic and comic ballet Capelia. This winter, Dame Nanette de Valois' beautiful production returns to the Royal Opera House for the first time since 2006. My name is Leanne Cope and I am a former dancer with the Royal Ballet and I am delighted to be presenting this evening Insight, which is supported by Rolex. Now we have so much to get through this evening. I'm very excited to be here because Capelia holds a dear space in my heart. It was the first ballet that I saw as a seven-year-old little dancer, budding, looking up at the stage at the ballerinas. So I would like to introduce our coach for this evening, the former principal dancer with the Royal Ballet, Leanne Benjamin. Thank you so much for joining us You're this welcome. evening. You're welcome. Um, basically, all I want to ask of you is what are we going to be seeing this evening? Well, we're going to be rehearsing Mayara on her first entrance, solo, which okay. is um, great. And if we have time, we're going to be rehearsing César's um, solo in the third act. OK, well, I feel like we definitely have to make time for that because I think that's going to be very impressive. May I add, <laughs> though, that I have never rehearsed César before in the solo. It'll be the first time I've seen it tonight because we're in the beginning of our rehearsal okay. series. Well, wonderful. Well, I'm very excited. I'm sure the audience is too. Thank so you. please let me introduce my Ara Magri and Cesar Corrales. And on the piano this evening, we have the wonderful Rob Clark. Thank you very much. Thanks to the end. Right. OK, my Ara, in the house, please. You know what you do right at the beginning? You're coming down the staircase. You've had your little look at the Capelia doll, and um, you have to have your own narrative in there about how you want to make this entrance. Whether or not you've seen her daily and you want to go and have a little chat to her, or however you want to do it. Let's see what you do with it. So, so just before she comes out of the house, please, Rob. Downstairs. OK, stop. OK. <laughs> OK, first of all, up here further. On the music, the thing about Dame Nanette's choreography, it's so musical. Bum, 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 bum. Da, da, da. And then you can free it up a bit. Back you go, once again. Right, go up a little bit, please, Mara, because the house comes directly down the staircase. And just the lead in. Wait. And right. Left and right. And here we go. Aha. Good. Okay. Have a little look. Have a little look. Okay, I might go and talk to the doll. And I'm going to stop you because it's all the wrong choreography. <laughs> okay, not all of it. it. You did it beautifully. The first time, ba da dum, ba da dum, hello, because you think it's a person. She doesn't say anything. So this is one of these ballets, unlike other things we've been doing at the moment, where you're actually talking to the audience a little bit. Use them as a narrative, you know. Oh, I don't know. And then da-da-dum, ba-da-dum. And why aren't you coming down? Mm, well, then I'm going to dance. So can we just do when she gets to the house? And step. Tell the audience as well. Well, what's she doing? And introduce yourself and another one. OK, off you go. That's it. Good. Good, darling, good. Come down stage. 
Don't rush, ride on the music. Come down, come down. She is reading. Hello. Good. Good. Come down. Good. 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 That's great. Good. Good. Right on that leg, left side, left side, left side, that's better, good, good, good. Darling, good, 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 good. Okay. I know, I know, I know. So you have to be a little bit more clear about your directions once mm -hmm. we get the rehearsals in, okay. and don't add anything. Okay. As in, you don't have to bore, bore, bore. Just stop and look at her. Hello, will you talk to me? Why isn't she talking to me? Hello, hello. Ugh. Okay, that kind of thing. And get your directions right. So this one, this first step comes slightly diagonally down, okay, okay. which is great. Don't, she's not going to be too okay. high. She'll, she'll be just at the edge of that piano. But this step was good, really good. Bum, 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 bum. And again, you're going up. You can't understand because obviously you just think she's a human being. What, what, you know, she's reading. Let me get your attention again. So if you've got to have that story in your head for it to work... OK, no, it's big, back this way, isn't it? This step was really good. Come down. Change your come downs. Come down. Please come down. So you don't want to do it all with a smile on your face, because actually you, you're getting quite cross at her. Why won't you come down? OK? And then don't bite this step either. Make sure you finish that fully. Mm -hmm. Proper leg up. Left. That's it. That's it. Good. Good. And right up to this diagonal. Go. You have to get really technical on this step. Two really good pirouettes or three. Boom, which you can do so easily. Up, up, that's it. Up, and then cross that nicely. That's it. Good. Now move this out a bit. Go, keep going on this. Dumb. Out, that's it. No minis, no mini. Okay. You know, you want to fill that stage. You're the only one on it. Okay. So take it. The stage is yours. Okay? And that, the last one is also very, um, you have to be particular about the way this comes in at the end. So it's, you know, um, even though your, your personality is free, in this ballet, your feet have to be so tidy and sharp. And Damonette was a real stickler for that. Okay, so really know where your placing is and crossing your feet. So don't just make it up. That's it, gorgeous. Okay, and then getting bigger, 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 bigger and then really angry, and then a bit of a this at the end, or whatever you want, in your way. Boom, 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 boom. And then lots and lots of chenets. That's where you can use your virtuoso. Mm -hmm. OK? So don't go up stage in that last chenet. Yeah. Good. Do you want to do any of that again? Um, Would you like to do that last? Do you want to do the mime or the last? da 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 OK, good. So, Rob. Oh, yes, yeah, the beckoning. Come down, that's it. Good, good. This way, a little bit more this way. That's it, not too sharp, that's better. Good. Down, and a bomb. Step out, step out, Mayara. Now step out, good. That's better. Good. Step out. Good. And bum, bum. OK. Yeah. OK, thanks, Rob. Don't make it up, my arrogant. Make it, I love it. You're such a great choreographer. But um, <laughs> that, that last one, you actually have to sustain it. You can't do a fifth turnaround. You've got to do that 
and then close. And One step. Yeah. So just to close. And that's why you have to step out, because if you step underneath you, you won't be able to do the leg coming down. So just to, the, the rest was really good, actually, really good. Bum, and dumb. Up, down. That's it. Oh, you've got to finish with this. And uh, bum, bum, and down. Good. Bum, bum, control. That dumb. But then you go, one. You've got to control that ending. That's it. And then that's on the one and two, and then you're wise. Why aren't you coming down? Okay, good, good, good. And then this should be left and a right, only two. Bam, that's it, that's why you got late. Good, good, yeah. Is it a little bit more clear? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Good, good, good. Very good rehearsal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's right at the beginning of these rehearsals, so um, it's um, early days. But that's a really good base. Good. Thank you. Cesar, would you like to do something? Can I have a look at you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing is, these dancers are so good. That's, that's the thing. And I mean, it's just about the fine details. Uh, thanks so much, Mara. Gorgeous. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. so, she's coming back later to do the pas de deux, so you'll see more. Um, right, let's see what you're doing, young man. <laughs> Take it easy. We can stop. Right, don't worry about that too much. Just know that in the pattern of this um, set... Oh, no, it's the third act. Yeah, but normally there's less space at the top and more space at the, at the front, and there'll be people sitting around <coughs> the stage. So you won't have masses of room. Um, OK, let me go over here. So, all right. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> You're dying, right? Because you've never done it before. Really, really good. Really, really good. He's amazing, isn't he? Right. <laughs> well done. Well done. I thought your battery section was fantastic, obviously, with your beats. But when you do this type of step, can you give it a little bit more style? Yes. So it looks a little bit classical. Know that this is Capellia, this okay. bit. So and I should open. I think so. I, yes, I think okay. you should open okay. and then extend it. It looks a little bit short, a little yes. bit almost too classical. You want to give this a real demi character feel. Yeah, and every time you go into fifth, I'm going to be a stickler about this. Really fifth. Really, really, really crossing those fifths. Yeah, nothing but crossed. OK. Um, do you want to just, you just mark this and just try this and see what you think? Yes. Real character. Yeah, good, good. Just try the other side. Good. That's it. Good. Excellent. Good. That's it. You've got to do this with real musicality. Good. So every opportunity you have to give it, you know, there's so much character dancing in this ballet. Yes. You don't want to make this ballet yeah. like Swan Lake or yeah. Bayadere or Don Q. You've got to give it an individual look. Um, so even on your Rebel Tards, finish it with a little bit more character. Yeah. Okay. You know? All right. Have a breath. Do you want to do your last? Shall I do my last combo? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Fabulous.
Where do you want to go from? Just the last. Okay. Good. Okay. Not bad. <laughs> okay, brilliant, right? Absolutely brilliant work. Were you going to try your arms on Did this? Yeah, you just didn't want to do it tonight for the first time. Could I tr can I see that? Yes. Um, there's a very difficult arm that the boys can do on their double tour where they change arms midway at the beginning and at the end, which makes the double tour so much more difficult, right? But I know you can do it, but only if you want to. I, you know, I want you to do it in the show, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. You, do you need a break? Okay, good. Fabulous. Again? Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I... I really think it's worth it yes. without going safe. Exactly. With your technique, okay. you don't need to go safe. All right. All right? <laughs> really. I think that's fabulous. Just remembering that, the musicality and uh, the style is paramount for this ballet. You know, it's very important. Mm, Mayara, would you like to do anything else Ooh. before we get pushed off? Would you like to do that first mime again in your solo? Thank you. Wonderful. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's just do that first entrance um, out of the house again. Okay. Wonderful. Right back. Wait. Oh. And a bump. Bump. Good. Good, darling, good. Ah. Oh. Okay. okay, stop. Okay, okay, Mayara. Okay, so there's no wave the first time. Just go. Oh, you can wave if you want, but it's 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 supposed to be just oh, okay. Dum ba da dum ba da da da. That's the one you're missing. Okay, so that's interesting. Yes, ba da dum ba da dum ba da 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 da. It's very square at the beginning, and then dum ba da dum. Get bigger and da dum. Okay, beginning was really good. So um, just the looks and into this. Okay. Four counts, dumb. That's it. Good. Calm down. Good. Diagonal. Good. Good. Charming. Now you can have a wave. That's it, good. Come down, good. Good, a little bit cross, not too smiley. Oh, you're getting a bit cross now. Okay, good. Wrong leg. Good. 
Good, darling, beautiful. Stay on the back of that leg in the turn. That's it. Yes, beautiful. Lots of turns, lots, 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 lots. Good. And away. Good girl. Beautiful. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Much better. Much better. Definitely. Much better. You just have to keep getting the wrong foot for this. Dum da dum ba da dum ba. Dum bum bum. And a left and a right. That's, uh, and a right. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just less. Simplify it. Simplify this because you've got a long way to go. You've got three acts to get through. So let it build. And she's a very simple creature. OK? OK, thank you so much. That was absolutely was wonderful. Great. Please, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> oh, one second, one second. You don't get away that easily. Come over here, Mayara and Cesar. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Leanne, thank you very much. We're going to get to chat a bit later. If you could just come this way. I know dancers don't like chatting that much, but we're going to give it a go anyway. That was really beautiful, both of you. And considering, like you said, probably the first time you've done it in a rehearsal, it's yeah. pretty amazing. Um, so my first question is, uh, what, when was the first time you saw Capelia or were in Capelia, or what does it mean to you, this ballet? I'm going to pass that to you first, my aunt. Okay. A bit tired after that. But oh, sorry. Okay. Actually, maybe I should... Like, actually, let's go to Cesar first. You've just been dancing. No, no, no ladies first. Ladies <laughs> first. Um, <laughs> so, um, well, seven years ago, I went to the Grand Prix de Lausanne, and that was the competition that I won and brought me to the Royal Valley School. Gave oh, me wow. the incredible. And I performed the Capella, this um, solo, with another version, a few more turns, a few more technical steps. And yeah, winning that competition with the Copelli Act One solo, I I ended up here at the Royal Ballet. So it's very important. So it must be very special moment. to you yeah. that you now get to make your debut on the Opera House yes, stage with the yes. Royal Ballet. Yes, yes. So it's yeah, I'm really pleased and yeah, excited. I'm Can't excited wait. for yeah. you. And the same question to you, Cesar. Well, um, honestly, this is my first um, uh, insight. So this is the first time being live <laughs> since I joined the Royal Ballet, and um, to be honest, I was quite nervous. It's not the same. Like, you well, know, you didn't look nervous, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So um, yeah, like you said, this was really our first, um, first time trying the steps and first time trying um, you know, the De Valois version. Um, so you guys were all part of the, my first experience. With me, so. <laughs> Yeah. So you will remember this moment yeah, dearly, for sure, and it's on for the sure. internet for life and now. It's on the internet too, so. Hello. <laughs> um, great. So my next question is: um, Could you describe what your role is within the ballet? So you're playing the role of Swan Hilda, and what is her journey and her character throughout the ballet? Um, yes. Yeah, so she's a young girl. Obviously, she's like free spirit and a happy girl. That she's in love with uh, Franz, and they're about to get married. Um, so during Act One, they have a little moment of she gets a bit um, jealous because she sees um, friends like sending kisses to the doll when she didn't know still there was a doll, and uh, she gets a bit jealous. So she's kind of like giving him a, a hard time throughout <laughs> Act One. So right, she so. want, yeah, she doesn't want to marry him anymore. So he could just like no look for someone else. Um, <laughs> And yeah, there's that. And in Act Two, we have um, the scene inside Dr. Coppelia's um, house, uh, which is he makes dolls. And she kind of like messes with him and takes all her friends inside the house to play with all his dolls. And try, she tries to drive him crazy with the, with the whole like, um, how do you say, like just mischief. messing around. Just general mischief. Yeah, yeah. mischief. <laughs> And yeah, and that's a bit sad in the end because he really cares about the dolls he made and she's just playing with it. Uh, and then in act three, we get to get married, she forgives him. And there's the pada that we're gonna be doing in a bit, uh, which is the wedding pada. Great, so you get, yeah. it's a great, it's, yeah, great full role yeah. to be honest. So you get to a play bit of everything. Yeah. a young, innocent girl, yeah. a doll. 
yeah. which we got which to see really you do yeah. on World Ballet Day. Yeah. If you want to check that out on World Ballet Day, you can go back to YouTube and see the whole day that there was here at the Royal Ballet. And Mayara is starring in that day because you got to do the rehearsal yeah. as the doll. And then the beautiful classical part de deux yeah. at the end, which we're going to see later. So now let's pass that question on to you. What is the role of Franz um, in this ballet? I mean, she pretty much said it all. I just want to <laughs> say that Franz is a very curious guy. So <laughs> I think that's uh, when curiosity strikes and that's what happens really. But um, yeah, you should definitely check it out. It's a great ballet and it has a little bit of everything. So um, I think uh, you'll have a great evening. As we saw then, um, Leanne is a tough coach. She really puts, even though we didn't have that much time, she really throws a lot of notes at you. There are many challenges in this ballet. Um, other than adding an extra arm in a double tour, what are the other big challenges in this ballet? Um, well, I'll find out soon. You'll find out yeah, soon? Yeah, I'll find out very soon within the coming weeks. Um, but again, yeah, I think uh, it's really good to have her and um, just uh, make sure that you're not you know, taking it easy, as you said. You know. Put that arm in and just make yourself, you know, work harder. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the rehearsal process with her. Great. <laughs> and one last question for you, Mayara. There are many technical aspects to this ballet, but storytelling is paramount, really, um, at the forefront, I think. So how has that been, and how has it been investing in that character and finding that version, your version of Swan Hilda? Yeah, it's very interesting because uh, there are so many details that you must put into the choreography and otherwise the, the audience can't read. Um, and it's really nice to find it, um, your own version, like you said, and Leanne really lets us, you know, what feels comfortable for you, and let's do that, that looks good, no, that doesn't look good, don't do that. <laughs> so it, it's, it's, it's very exciting, this process of finding your own character, and really, really fun, like, we've only had a few hours, and it's just, yeah, it's really fun. Great. It's exhausting, because very, it's specific, the technique is very, has to be clean, like she said, and um, with the music, so then the audience really get the, um, the excitement out of it. So yeah. Great, and we're gonna get to, to see it. you do a little bit more of rehearsal later, yeah. but I'd like to thank them very much for now. Go and have a bit of a break. Thank you. Thank you very much to Mayara and Cesar, if you take it that way, that would be great. You can catch Capalia at the Royal Opera House from the 28th of November until the 7th of January. And as a pre-Christmas treat, you can also see it live at cinemas across the world on the 10th of December. If you want to find your nearest cinema, please visit the Royal Opera House website. Now I'm going to be joined by two Capalia experts. They have been coaching the dancers for these last couple of weeks and right up until opening night and beyond. Please let me welcome back Leanne Benjamin and please give a very warm welcome to Stephen Wicks. Thank you so much for joining me. Perfect. Great. So, where should I start? Uh -huh. <laughs> At the beginning. You At the decide. beginning, the very beginning. So, Leanne, you yeah. last performed this role, or maybe not last, but um, I've got in my notes here, 2000 was when the revival first happened, and then it was done in 2006. Well, it was 2006 the that last I did the time. filming, wasn't it? Oh, it I... was 2006 Okay. the filming with yeah. the So, yes. what is so special yeah. about this role for you, personally? Um, I think what I loved about this role is, first of all, it's just a wonderfully three-act ballet. It's really well-crafted. Mm -hmm. And the girl gets the opportunity to dance a lot of solos, a lot of pas de deux. She gets to uh, use her comedic timing. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really loved about this ballet. And then you get the beautiful pas de deux and solos and codas showing you virtuoso as well. Um, and I think what I... What I love mostly about this ballet is it's, it is um, unassumingly difficult, technically, mm -hmm. but because there's so much humour um, and character and story going into it, you kind of forget. But I'm there to remind the dancers <laughs> As about, <we> just saw. <laughs> yeah, about the technique and about being clean, and Dame Lynette was a stickler for footwork, um, and she... You know, she talked a lot and she's written a lot about the fact that she thought it was so important for young students to study different types of dance. Mm -hmm. And you see that in here. You know, the character dances and then Swan Hilda in second act gets to dance a Scottish dance and she gets a Spanish dance. And, uh -huh. You know, she's, she's changing up all of the time. Um, 
and also the darkness of second act, I think, is very important. Yes. That she gets to dance with um, Dr. Capelius, yeah. that uh, Stephen performed amazingly. A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and it's just very, it's very interesting for a ballerina also to be dancing with a character principal. Mm. Of and that's very different as well. And it just... You almost have two leading men. Yeah. Yes. You have yeah. two leading men. How lucky. Very extreme. <laughs> one <laughs> handsome and dashing. One handsome and one. And the other very old. looking very old and crotchety. <laughs> You know, okay, well, and a bit of a demon. And old and crotchety, we're passing it on to old you now, crotchety. Stephen. <laughs> um, so, I have in my notes here that this role came to you very early on in your career, before many of the classical roles came to you. Would you like to? It did. Yes, I joined um, Sadler's Wells Royal Ballet in 1975, and um, I think it was I did Rustics in Midsummer Night's Dream. Mm -hmm. and Peter Wright. Um, well, I don't know what I did, but I made the audience laugh. I think a lot. And I don't know, he, um, I think he saw in me something of a character actor then. Uh -huh. So um, he cast me in Dr. Capalis at the beginning of my career, which was strange because I did it before all my classical work, before Siegfried, mm. which at the time was strange when you're a young guy and suddenly you're an old man. Mm. Um, but John Ald was in the company then as assistant director and he was playing um, Dr. Capalis and he was very, t even taller than me, mm -hmm. which I think was quite unusual because you think of Dr. Capalius as short. They usually cast, you know, shorter people in it. So mm -hmm. suddenly there was this huge John Ord. And then, so I could, I learned so much from him. He was absolutely extraordinary. He was a real inspiration to me. And I just found it, it was incredible. It was something I could really get into early on. And I danced it for 20 years. You know, it was a, an amazing role and one of my absolute favorite roles. Mm -hmm. Because as Leanne said, the ballet is so rich. Musically, it's amazing, amazing to lead music like Sylvia is another amazing score. It tells the story so well, and actually, if you dance it on the music, mm. it's, it's, it's all there. Yeah. It's, it's just there for you, and it's, so, and it's a beautiful, and I, it's a sort of triple love story. You've got, you've got Swan Hilda and France, you've got France loving um, Capalia the doll, and then you've got Dr. Capalius loving the, however you see it, his daughter that he's created, Mm -hmm. And he believes he's brought this beautiful girl to life, and then of course he hasn't, and his everything shattered. You know his life. Mm -hmm. So the end of Act Two has to be treated incredibly carefully, yeah, because I think it should be a, a, a moment of great pathos and sadness. And I, you know, I've seen a lot of productions where everyone's going wild at the end of Act mm -hmm. Two, and it just doesn't work. It has to be this moment of almost yeah. stillness to make it work, really. Mm -hmm. And who coached you in the role? Um, well, John Ald really coached me and Peter Wright, mm -hmm. but then amazingly, um, I think you were far too young, um, Robert Heltman came to Incredible. dance it, which was... Oh, right. Oh, so wow. I'm sure you Amazing. all know Robert Heltman, and for those of you that don't, we'll probably most recognise him as being the evil child catcher in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yeah. Um, so Pretty similar as Dr Capalius. Very, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, how incredible yeah. to be coached by him. It was extraordinary. He was completely different, mm. but wonderful. And I've sort of remembered, I've, I've, I, I didn't want to say to the, the guys I'm teaching, you know, this is how it has to be. Because mm. um, I think it's, as Leanne will say, it's, it, it's, it's very important not to say you're going to be a carbon copy of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to give them the tools and they have to create, the, particularly with Dr. Capay's, a walk. I said, you know, you must, the first thing you've got to find is your walk. Um, there's a story about Dustin Hoffman mm. in Tootsie. He just couldn't, couldn't get the role right. And I think somebody gave him a pair of stilettos one day, put them on <laughs> and he sort of walked around and suddenly he said the whole character came to him in that uh -huh. moment of yeah. having the walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really important, those little things, mm. but not to sort of, absolutely say this is how it is and I've told the guys about some of the things that Robert Heltman did how he hung his coat up and a few other very different to what we did but it was just extraordinary to see this man this legend of course we'd all have heard of doing Dr Capalius I think that's what's so great about bringing someone like Stephen in is because it's that passing on mm -hmm. that's just so terribly important because things do get forgotten, mm. and not that they get forgotten because things are written down, etc. but maybe someone taught you something that, um, you know, they might have come up with when it comes to acting or the way they put a coat on a peg or just something that you hadn't thought about before. Yeah. Mm. And you suddenly go, oh, gosh, I never thought about that. And the dancers also do that to me. I don't know if they do. They challenge you. They say, and I love that. When someone yeah. says, yeah. oh, but I thought it was this, and I went, oh, I've never heard that before, but yeah. I like it. 
Okay, so you can do that because you've really thought that through. As long as it through. makes sense. As yeah. long the as it story makes sense. The at the end of the day, what do we want? We want to have a story. Of you course. want to have a story told, told correctly and beautifully. Yeah. And, and I think mime also, I'm, I'm, I'm really worried that mime has sort of disappearing, traditional mime. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was done in 1870. So you have to remember that, you know, the whole, the world was different. There was bowing, curtsying, you know, it was all very formal. And so... It's not and like again, you send an emoji to someone, you would do it. Neat, neat. <laughs> it's a <laughs> mime. It <in. laughs> yeah. But musically, again, it has to all be absolutely on the music. Mm -hmm. People think if you're miming, you can just mime through the music and it won't matter. But it's absolutely on the music. The music's there. Do the mime on the music and it just makes the whole thing come to life. It mm. really does. It's so important. And again, Madam was a stickler for mime as well as mm. feet. And I bet Stage it's crap. lovely as the principal ballerina to get to do mime because mm. other than thinking off the top of my head, obviously the lilac fairy famously has a mime, the mother in Giselle has a mime, but actually as far as the leading ballerina goes, they don't do that much mime as such and well, you tell a lot of the story through mime in Yeah, it. I think this is quite specific mm -hmm. because as I said in a lot of ballets today, um, we don't want to project out too much to the audience. Mm -hmm. We want the audience to come into us. So the darker ballets, those big full lengths, etc., the Romeo and Juliets, etc., you want the audience to come into your world. But that's what I was trying to say to Mayara Breaking earlier. That fourth wall. This is mm. kind of different. I mean, it's sort of um, it's just very different. We don't do a lot of this now, Not do to we? The, no, like, no, yeah. this, this is, is a story, and I'm going to tell you. It's a bit like Miranda. <laughs> She does her scene. And then, and you're then cute. she cute. <laughs> you know, true. it's relating it's to that. True. Yeah, and it's funny, and she's brought that back. That yeah. kind of um, that kind they of. I find it a bit difficult actually. The dancers suddenly say you can. They say Break what? That really? say, no, you can right go and say, you know, I'm yes, the because devil. Only a and week. you actually yeah. have the joke with the audience, which yeah. is really nice. Because only a week ago we were telling them in the last ballet, do not speak <laughs> to the audience. I'd speak with your eyes and your projection, but the story is amongst your characters inside on your world of the stage. I have one more question that I really want to ask you before we run out of time. Yeah. How important is costume once you step on that stage? Does it make you ter really turn into that person? Everything. Mm. For, well, um, yes, for me, it, yeah, absolutely. And the, all, the, all the fabulous guys I'm coaching, they, they, they're still finding their characters because it's early days. But they've had their, their, a few of them had their fittings, and all came back and said, "Oh my goodness, I put my costume on. I'm going to have a hump, or I'm going to, you know." And they suddenly they've, they've found their walk suddenly, mm -hmm. and they feel so. It's so important. It really is. It's it's really important. Do you find that important as well? Oh, or yeah. Not, and you know? I mean, look at the red tutu. I yeah. don't know if and, you can see it on the screen, but you come out in that red tutu, and it doesn't feel like a Swan Lake tutu or a Sleeping Beauty. It's it's Capella. You're a doll, yeah. and the colour and the vibrancy and the bow. I just think they're so beautiful. I think they're stunning costumes. I think the designs are incredible and the colours in this ballet great. are wonderful. It's a great piece for family to see. It really uh, is. I think um, children and adults. Thank you so much. And you're going to lead me perfectly on to my next guest. Thank but you. let me say thank you very much to both of you. We're going to see you again a little bit yeah. later, Leanne, but yeah. thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so for much, all your knowledge. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Now, I am delighted to welcome my next guest this evening. She is the costume supervisor here at the Royal Opera House. It is Natalia Stewart. Hi. Oh, my goodness, I'm losing my earpiece just a little bit. Um, thank you so much for being here. First of all, I want to ask you about your role as costume supervisor here at the Royal Opera House, because I'm guessing it's a, a pretty important one. Yes, as a costume supervisor, we revive, revive every production that comes back to life again and again. Mm -hmm. That's something that's in the rep. Um, all the big, small production, they have to be um, tried and redo again every time. As the companies change, the dancers change, the roles are changed. So that's what we do. Great. And I'm guessing, depending on the scale of the production, each production takes a little bit more time. And this one hasn't been in the rep to us for 13 years. So what? happens to those costumes in those 13 years? Well, the costumes usually store in um, Wales, in the big storage in Aberdeer that we have. So and this costume's been waiting until we bring them back again and we'll clean and iron and then try and dance us again. And um, that's what we have now. And that's what we are doing right now every day until the first performance we're going to have in a week's time. 
So how much notice do you get to get these costumes back here? Is it like a year, six months, a couple of weeks? Mm, well, it's <laughs> different every time. You know, sometimes um, I have um, maybe a couple of months to prepare it and sometimes I have three weeks. <laughs> So oh, that's, wow. It's different every My goodness, time, yes. I hope you've had a decent amount of time for this. They look like they've had a decent amount of time. Anyway, I think now we should... They've been standing here a while, and we need to introduce these headless people behind us. So let's go to this costume first, and can you tell us who wears this beautiful dress? So this is what you saw Mayara rehearsing. So that's her first costume when she comes on stage as Swanilda. So this costume is... It's beautifully designed, if you see, and we tried to recreate it exactly how it was designed in that time in 1954. So this costume consists in the three different parts that we have to reproduce. And now, as um, time moves on, and we notice it even more when there's a gap of 13 years, how much we progress and technologies want to do. So, for example, that blouse that all those used to be hand printed of the different little details um, of roses. Mm -hmm. Now we could, for quickness, as we don't really have enough time, um, we could print it on this um, amazing uh, print machine when we scan the design and um, we could just print the um, meters and meters of fabric so every dancer will have her own personal blouse. Amazing. And is this slightly different than the apron? This is the same sort of technique. So again, you know, it's always been hand printed. So literally people sat at the table and printed by wow. the, the brushes. So it would be amazing to preserve this technique and skills. Um, but again, if we need to produce it much quicker now so that we have that machine in reserve, that we could scan it and, and to recreate the designs exactly. How many Swanildas do we have this year? Do you know? We've got eight. Eight? My goodness. And they all have they every all have single costume. They all have their own costumes. So we have eight costumes on the rail. And they're all fitted individually for each dancer? They're fitted individually and specifically for each dancer, yes. Wow. Beautiful. I think we should move on to the next one. So here we have... Actually, I don't know who this is. Well, I do know, but I'm going to let you tell everyone who so it is. So this is Dr Capellius, one of the main characters and um, one of the main and this very important characters for us. And if Steve, as Stephen was talking about earlier, about how to create characters and mm -hmm. how the costumes are very um, important for this, we try to do this the same for the um, new Dr Capellius as that we have this time. So oh. we have four people and there's only one done it before. So we try to recreate and give them um, possibility to find their characters when we come um, to the costume fittings. So they can come and have a discussion with you about maybe changing something slightly different? Or? Yes, the design's still the same, exactly the same. So we talk about maybe um, adding a different bow or maybe bigger, maybe bigger buttons, how we um, do the waistcoats, do we put the little chain on the waistcoats, on the watches and everything else, you know, the lengths as well and just try to build the character as the dancer during the costume fitting. That's and it's always very exciting every time and we love that process. I'm sure and it's not very often that a dancer does actually get to have those discussions with you because normally it's like this is your costume, there's no deviation <laughs> from the design so I think for all those budding dancers that want to become costume designers, this is the perfect role for them. <laughs> I think it is. It is amazing to go through all this process and to have the time. So we're lucky. Great. Yeah. Final costume. I think Leanne was chatting about this one before, wasn't she? Well, this is, yes, when you imagine Capellia, that usually that's what the look you um, see. Mm -hmm. And this is a um, Capellia doll tutu. So through during the performance, we must have two of them. So one belongs to Swanilda uh, when she changes and another one belongs to the doll who sits in the window and reads and later on as well. So there's all those two tutus. And that's, as uh, um, Leanne was talking earlier, that is amazing, fun, happy and colourful costumes to work this and to wear, I hope. So you must have many of these tutus because you not only have the eight Swan Hilders, but you also then have however many dolls that have to sit in the balcony for most that, of Act One. That's right, but we, we will try to manoeuvre them around a little bit because it, it's, it's quite tricky to reproduce. There's uh, so many ribbons and different details. Yeah. So, um, but we still have plenty. We still have uh, lots of tutus to go around and to give each girl um, the best. 
How many people does it take to make one of these tutus? Well, usually I try and all of us try as a one maker who one? takes the My whole goodness. whole thing wow. on. But occasionally then there's a, some makers prefer to do just two tutu because it is a tricky process, even though I'm not venturing into that. <laughs> um, but um, some people prefer to do the body system decoration, but um, usually the maker will take the whole thing as the one garment because it's easier to fit. So when the dancers doesn't have to come in twice or three times for different people to fit. So you do it all in one day. Amazing. And I'm guessing a tutu probably is one of the most complicated pieces of costume to make. How long does it take to make the average tutu? <laughs> well, you know, some makers, I even was surprised, you know, they did it sort of over lunch hour, but not exactly, but it was that quick. Because I think there's a, like a patterns and um, of, um, that you can lay the nets, things. But usually, if I um, commission someone to make a tutu, two weeks would be okay. If wow. I go less than that, people probably wouldn't, would be <laughs> arguing with me. Okay. But two weeks, that's, that would be an um, okay time to do. Amazing. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Natalia. Thank that's you. been an amazing insight to everything that goes on behind the scenes. And I can't wait to see these productions in all their, not productions, costumes, in all their glory on the Royal Opera House stage. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have had people tuning in from all over the world this evening, from Spain to France, USA, Australia, Sweden and Paraguay. And some beautiful comments too. Rachel from Stafford said, my Ara is such a beautiful dancer. I'm sure, well, everyone agrees with that here. And Aqua Blush Girl, which I'm guessing this one comes from Twitter, says, I haven't seen Capelia for over 25 years. But I would adore to see this. Well, you can. You can tune in, well, you can watch this rehearsal again, but you can also go and see it at the cinemas. When did I say? It was on December the 10th. If you go to the Royal Opera House website, you can see if there is a cinema near you. Now, I think it's time for a little bit more dancing. So please let me reintroduce Leanne Benjamin, who's going to be coaching Mayara and Cesar, and of course, the wonderful Rob Clark accompanying on the piano. They're going to be doing the Act Three Pas de Deux. Thank you very much. All right. Guys, you haven't actually done this part of day yet, have you? You've just learnt it. So bear with us. Bear with us. Cesar, do you know your entrance um, into this part of day coming on from this stage? Just asking, do you, know, do you know where my beloved is? And then they say she's here, and you see her, and she comes down, talking about costumes, in the most stunning uh, white and gold tutu, and you will just come down beautifully and calmly and with a bit more reverence for this act because you're going into a very um, calm pas de deux, balletic pas de deux now. So, uh, Rob, can we have just where César comes on? So you'll be coming on from over there, César. That's it. I think you're near the front. Yep. Okay. And you'll be up the top, so stay back a little bit for the cameras anyway. Asking your friends. That's it. That's it. And stop. <laughs> now, what you don't want to do is get too close to her. And I keep trying to get you guys back a bit because, you know, this whole part of dough moves downstage. You've got this big lift coming up, so you've got to think backwards. Mayari, when you come down the stairs, uh, you can come around the corner a bit, just so you know, but your first step is literally the simplicity of just looking and standing. And then you will go into your bore from here. Do you know the timing of that? Kind of, yeah. yeah. Do you want me to do it with you? Yes, okay, sure. Cesar, why don't we take it away again? Okay. Not too close to her because she's got to come somewhere to bore to you. Okay, straight on. And you're asking your friends, do you know where she is? Okay. And wait. Okay, here we go. Just look at him. Come down. And then at the end of the phrase, you'll settle. Bum, 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 bum. And... 
Glory. Two, three, and hand. Attitude, a little bit shorter. Good. One, you've got time. Here we go. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay, well done, well done. No, don't hurt yourself. Okay. And Rob, be playing. <laughs> Good. 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 And come down on that left leg. Mind his leg as well. Okay. So that's... Okay, it's tricky. So, yeah. Well done. Well done. Okay. <laughs> It's the first time for everything, right? OK, Be the beginning was beautiful. Do you see again the musicality and the simplicity is so important because this builds up this whole act. You've got all your virtuoso at the end. Um, this was great. A little bit more bend on that attitude. Don't make it too Russian. Make it a little bit more English. Yeah, English attitude. Um, and around, this was great. Just take it. Now, when you go up on this lift, I think you need to go a little bit more. Know that you need to be a little bit more on your left side. I think we'll help him. Do you think that will help, yes. Cesar? Okay. Yeah. You don't need to do that again at the moment if you don't want to. Do you want to try it? Okay. Uh, do you want to do it with the music? Oh, okay. So the other thing is when you put Mayara down, wherever you are, where are you finishing there? So you have to know, yeah, don't go too far because she can come down and then Mayara. So you, you've got to be careful that you don't go down here. Once you've come down, you can bring this foot or you can, you can fudge it so you, you come circle, a little circle so that you get away from his foot. Otherwise, you're going to step on his calf. Okay. okay? Why don't we just go from where she settles? Yeah. Good. Speak with your foot. Speak with it. Good. Hand. At leg, good. Slow, slow. Good. Lean towards him. Okay. Let's go again. I'm not standing at the front, so. I think what you have to do is get her up quite quickly. Come. That's fine. Go back. Go back. Attitude. Do you need to be closer to her? Bum. OK, now, once you go down, get... That's it. That's better. That's it. That's it. I think maybe you were too far behind her or too far in front. That's great. Let's keep going. <laughs> Good. Come down. And um, now, a little beret round in a circle. My other foot. Yep, that's it. And down, leg. Okay, stop, stop. Okay, Mara. So you want this leg to be directly to the side or near, nearer to the side, and it's not completely turned out or turned in. It's a bit of a character position again, somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's nice. Okay. Just a little lead in, Rob. Bum and hand. Okay, stop. Okay. Hand and end, a hand and end, a foot. Okay. Sorry, I have to be so pedantic, but it really makes it. Okay. And. And. Hand. Hand, straight leg, bent leg. Take your time. Good. Good. Up. And into a ponche. Good. Here we go. Good. And back up into the pirouette. Good. 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 And good. And let's stop. Good, good, much better, much better. Mayara, when you come around here, it will really help you 
if you start come leading with the front foot so that it doesn't make you go backwards, otherwise you can bump into him. Yeah, little circle around, it's better. This was all great. Not too close to her, so you've got some way to go. And really feed this foot up ever so slowly. Everything is important. Good. No running after, after this tiddle around here. Da, da. Simpli simplicity again. Straight into the pirouette. Boom. So you just have to get your first one. You can run a little bit further on here if you want. Then the second one is just past the centre. Just past the centre. So the, part, the time you do your step, you're in centre, give or take. Okay. You know? Okay. Don't mess up your turn just because you've got to get into the centre, but you want to try and be in the centre for the next step. Um, do you want to just do that run in the bourree? Um, yeah, just before. That was good. Very good. And run on the note. Classical arms, classical arms. That's for it, for it, run for it. Okay. Okay, stop. <laughs> my ara. Maybe it's my Australian language. Um, <laughs> but you still stepped out. It's just a bore, 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 no run. Okay. No, Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, no run. Okay. Bore, 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 step. No. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Keep boreing around. Um, straight on to the runs, and we'll just pick up the end of this one. And go. Right behind her, Cesar. Lift up first, lift up before you go down. Wait for it. Bum and finish. Good. And good. Yes, good. 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 Okay, good. Arm at the front. Okay, let's stop. Okay, good, good. That was beautiful, this thing. Um, run into arm, great, because we hadn't tried that, right? Yeah. Uh, you can give this a little bit more a style with this hand, so it doesn't again look like another ballet. A little bit of style here. Uh, Mayra, when you finish this position, you should have this left arm in front of you in that kneel on his knee. And then he takes the hand from there and pulls you back up. That's the... Um... Let's go straight into the music, and you don't have to do this lift again unless you want to. You can go straight into the first arabesque. Okay. We want the first lift, so just before the first lift. And don't be late. Good. Back, a bit more back, Mayara. Good. Little bit of style in that left wrist. Left arm. That's it. He'll get you up. OK, stop. OK. <laughs> it's like Lego, isn't it? OK, so you're going to take her this. wrist or something, and you're oh. going to pull her up this way. Yeah. Sorry. And you actually you need to use your stomach muscles, yes. funny enough. So once you... Yeah. <laughs> it's your six-pack. Once you do this contretemps, can you give me a little bit more back up in the air? Yes. OK. Um, good. Sorry, I just... You, it can really... It really helps her. It's quite difficult to get out of this position yeah. because she's on point. So you have to bring her back to her foot. Um, you could just get into that position if you want. You don't have to do it again unless you want to. Yeah, sure. OK. Yeah, play the first one. Good. Little bit of wrist. Yeah, beautiful. Take this down, down. Oh, keep that arm low. Good. Good. Back. That's better. Good. Now show me this one. And around. Left arm down. Left arm down, Mayara. OK, stop. OK, good. It is much better. I don't know what the others are doing, whether they're taking their arms up, but you, you have to just negotiate that. Mayara. So as you're taking round, how about that? I suppose you could go up, actually. I suppose you could, but can you go up and lead down with it, and that will flow better. And then he's got something... Really pull her... Actually, you could take a hand if you want. Actually, take my hand. 
No. Hand. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. It's sorry, my language. Sorry. It's no, just no, no, not no. good tonight, is it? Not really. Okay. So pull her. Pull, so, no. Can you pull her out instead right. of up? Okay. I think it's going to help you. That's it. This way. So she needs you to get up onto okay. this leg. Because okay. it's quite difficult. And we will work on that. Yeah. We won't fix it tonight. But... Um, do you want to do that second one? Yes. Uh, just a lead into the second one, the second lift. Yeah. Okay. This is beautiful, actually. And this is gorgeous. Good. He's played this. Good. And just wait, because he's played that. <laughs> That was beautiful, actually. Keep her going this way. Don't fiddle around with her. Just get up her up quickly. Good. And back. Good. OK, stop. OK. And we, never want, we don't want that unless you have to. We want you to have negotiated your distance. It's always better to come, for you to come in than to start stepping backwards, because it looks weak. OK, so give her the room. Just, you always have to remember, a girl may want to extend her leg. OK. I think you're fine. Yeah, well, you need to be. I think, <coughs> basically, your arm is in the centre. Yeah. You know, but wherever she is, even if she's yeah. come further, better that you come into her than go away. I mean, obviously, if, you, if she's too close in the show, you will go backwards. Right, OK. Uh, just to lead into this. That was great, guys. Yeah. Sorry. Good. And beautiful turned out foot. Bit more back. And good. And this is one. Sorry, I was late. Bum, bum, and two. Good. Lift up and take a little look at him now. Good. Okay, stop. Okay. The work is beautiful. The timing needs, do you need to? It's just one of these ballets. Sometimes you can play with steps. I love that. There's nothing better than playing with the music. But there's some ballets where you just have to be on the note if you can, and then extend out of the note. Like this, da dum bum. The lingering is with the back, not with the lateness of the leg. Mm -hmm. And it's the same as this. There's a note when you should be on this. And I made a mistake. This first one, I, got it, I didn't say the first time. That's and one, the lump, bum, bum, and two, the lump, bum, 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 bum. Just get on with this so that you have a bit of time if you want to linger back to Cesar with loving eyes. Okay. Um, just, can we just have the end? What, why don't you do the second one of this into the last bit again? Um, No, not too close. You'll have to step back now, Cesar, if you're too close. Lift up. Let it go. You've got time. And wait. Step, step, step. Arabesque. Promenade. And return. Good, beautiful retiree. Slower, slower, slower. Good, support her. Don't have the arm too closed in for her. That's it. Good, with style, Mayara, when you do. Right, now don't cross her arm too much because it's pulling her. That's it, good. Good, excellent. Okay, grit and bear it. <laughs> Ponche. And a leg. No, it's not Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> okay. Okay, nice. Round him, round him, round him like a Swiss roll. 
Uh, okay, good. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I just forgot. Okay. Don't worry about this. So I think in those promenades, I think for you, I don't know what you think, Mayara, are you a little bit too far this way? Yes, okay. So she needs to be more this way. Um, every time you do this, I mean, you've got to pretend that it's, it's all so easy. It's all so easy, even though you've been standing on one leg for forever. Okay, and the very last one, bum, 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 bum. Rob, can we just have the end of the last one? Yeah. Or you're trying for that note? No. No. From here, you just come up with a coupe. You can either do a développé into this or straight. Yeah, last promenade. You don't have to do it. You can just stand on your point. But make sure your relationship is well. If you're too far this side of her, it will pull her, and this has got to be completely decote, this whole thing. You too, Cesar. Okay. Um, Rob? Yeah. And... And ponche? Ponche and foot. Good. Pirouette. Now, Bore, and go a little bit wider around him. That's it. And hoik up. Yeah, great. Excellent, excellent. Wow. Come down. Yeah, yeah. Really good. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand that more? Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. And actually, one of the most difficult things <laughs> is coming out of that, right? Because <laughs> you're like... Yeah. Which, ha which way do I come out? So you can either come out this way and then go and go into your bow and everything was perfect and you didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do this to the audience. <laughs> or you can take a turn around, whatever you want. You can actually, or you can go this way, Mara. Okay. okay. But little things like that, you have to negotiate between, yeah. between you. Sorry, yeah, well done. That was really, I mean, gosh, first time <laughs> at this hour. Thank that was you. absolutely wonderful. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to both uh, of you. you. Well done. Really well done. It's been such a fantastic rehearsal. And what I'm really going to take away from this is that it takes an army to make a new production. Well, not a new production, a revival like this. The dancers get the applause at the end of the evening. But I really think we should think about, as an audience member, what goes on behind the scenes. Natalia making those beautiful costumes and instructing everyone to do that. The coaches, Leanne and Stephen, that coach these dancers to be as amazing as they are. The crew, the musicians, everyone is so fantastic. Um, thank you to all my guests this evening. You have all been absolutely wonderful in this evening's Insight, which was supported by Rolex, and thank you for watching at home. Uh, Capelia is at the Royal Opera House from the 28th of November, and of course that cinema relay is on the 10th of December. I hope you've had a great evening. We certainly have. See you very soon. Good night. <laughs>